Hi, I'm Dan Abel, and in this video we'll be calculating the force on a charge placed in an electric field. To get a better sense of the electric field, let's look at something we're more familiar with, which is the idea of gravity. So let's say I've got a one kilogram box, and I'm going to place that box at a certain distance from, it, from the Earth, where it's going to feel a force of 10 newtons. Now, if I were to take that box and double the mass, so now I've got a two kilogram box. As you know from your earlier studies of the gravitational force, doubling the mass would double the amount of force. So now we'd have 20 newtons. And if I were to triple the mass to three kilograms, tripling the mass would triple the amount of force to 30 newtons. And so it's useful at this point to talk about a force per mass, a force per kilogram. And for this specific example, that would be 10 newtons per kilogram. Every kilogram you add to the box, we have another 10 newtons of force. This is the same idea that the electric field gets at. Let's say we have a charge Q and that charge Q will exert a force on any other charge around it. So if I have a charge of, let's say, one Coulomb, that's going to feel a certain amount of force, let's say five Newtons. And as we know from our study of Coulomb's law, if I double the charge to two Coulombs, I now have a force of 10 Newtons. I have double the force and so on and so I can just like we had the idea of force per mass with gravity I can have the idea of force per charge and that's what the electric field is defined as is defined as the force per charge at a given location fields are also useful because they explain how we can have a force without the two objects touching the way we think about this is that the original charge Q it creates an electric field, and then another charge that enters that field experiences a force. Let's make more sense of that last point uh, with this apply question. At some distance from a large positive charge, a one Coulomb positive point charge, so here's my one Coulomb point charge, experiences a force of one Newton pushing it away from the large positive charge. So a force here of one Newton. What would the force on the point charge be if its charge was changed to? So we're looking at changing this one Coulomb charge to these three numbers, two, five, and 10. And in the last lesson on Coulomb's law, we saw that we could calculate this using K, Q1, Q2, over r squared that would tell us what the force would be. So let's plug in what we know. We are given that if we have a one Coulomb charge that the force will be one Newton. We don't know what the charge of that large positive charge is and we don't know what the separation distance is. But let's think about this. If I replace that one Coulomb charge with a two Coulomb charge and I think about everything else is going to stay the same. I haven't changed my large charge. I haven't changed uh, Q. Uh, I haven't changed K. I haven't changed R squared. All I've done is double that one Coulomb charge. This is a linear equation, so that should double my force. I'll get a force of two Newtons. And so replacing that one Coulomb charge with two Coulomb charge will give me a two Newton force. Now instead, let's say I replace that two Coulomb charge with a five Coulomb charge. Now I have five times my original charge. Well, I'll end up with five times my original force. I'll have a five Newton force because everything else is staying the same. And if I replace that original one Coulomb charge with a 10 Coulomb charge, I will get a force of 10 times the original force or 10 Newtons. So hopefully you can see the power here of recognizing that everything in the middle 
k q1 r squared that these things are not changing when all I'm doing is changing that point charge. And so we can call this the electric field. We can say that this is the force per charge. And then you tell me what the charge is. And I can tell you what the force will be. Um, and so we can write this symbolically as the electric force equals the electric field times the charge that you put in that field. But again, this field depends only on the charge that creates it and how far away I am from that charge. And a lot of times this gets rewritten instead of saying electric force is electric field times Q, we say that the electric field is the force divided by Q. And that drives home again that point that it is the field is the force per unit charge. And that's why the units are a Newton per Coulomb. So the unit for an electric field is a force per charge. Let's take this equation and use it to solve some problems. So we want to determine the force acting on uh, a point charge in each of the given electric fields here. And it's good to remind ourselves um, that these things are vectors. So our equation is electric field is electric force divided by charge, per charge. And so by drawing the little vector symbol, vector arrow, just reminds us that the electric field and the electric force both have a direction. We'll talk about that more uh, in the next lesson. But let's go ahead and calculate with this. So we're given a one Coulomb charge in a two Newton per Coulomb electric field. So we have two equals force divided by one. And that gives us a force of two Newtons. Let's increase both the charge and the field in part B. In part B, we have a three Newton per Coulomb electric field. And we're looking for the force with three Coulombs of charge. We'll multiply both sides by three. And that'll give us a force of nine Newtons. And then if you look at part C, part C uses the same electric field, two Newtons per Coulomb, but we have five times the charge. So we can kind of guess based on what we were talking about in the last apply question, what the answer will be. But let's work it out. I've got a two Newton per Coulomb field and a five Coulomb charge. And that gives us a total force of 10 Newtons, which is five times the force that we had when we only had a one Coulomb charge. So this brings home the point that in a, in a given electric field at a given point, if you double the amount of charge you put in that field, you'll get double the force. If you quadruple the amount of charge you put in that point in the field, you'll quadruple the force.
because then the best way to understand an electric field is by looking at a field you're more familiar with, which is gravity. So if we're standing on the surface of the Earth, and near the surface of the Earth, you know that the force of gravity is given by mg, where m is the mass of the object. And we usually think of g as the acceleration due to gravity, but another name for g is the strength of gravity, uh, or the, the strength of the gravitational field. And so instead of 9.8 uh, meters per second squared, that's the same thing as saying 9.8 newtons per kilogram. And this tells us something about the gravitational field near the Earth's surface. So if I go and I put a one kilogram mass near the Earth's surface, it will experience a force of 9.8 newtons. If instead I change that to a two kilogram mass, then that will experience a force of 19.6 newtons. And so the Earth creates this gravitational field because it has mass. And then when I put another mass in there, it experiences a force from that field. And doubling the mass, double the force. Electric fields are similar. If I've got a charged object, let's say Q, that charged object, because it's charged, creates an electric field around itself. And then if I bring another charged object into that field, call that little q, that, will, that charged object will experience an electric force because it's in the electric field. And just like when I double the amount of mass, I double the amount of gravitational force, if I double the amount of this little q, I'll double the amount of electric force. And this brings home the point that the electric field is really the amount of force that would be experienced per coulomb of charge. So the electric field depends solely on this big Q that created it. 